What's up y'all? Welcome to the winning team. I'm Nikisha. If you're new today, let's talk about how to start a blog in 2024. Now, if you're one of those people and you think that blogging is dead, you are absolutely wrong. It is not. Google is still thriving and still serving out websites to everybody searching online. And so we are still blogging. And today I wanted to talk about it. If you don't know why you should be listening to me and why I'm even speaking on blogging in the first place, six years ago at this point, I started a blog, left my corporate job and decided I wanted to write about my journey as a mom and my journey to make money from home and stay home with my kids. It kind of took off for me and it's the reason that I make six figures today. This YouTube channel is simply an extension of my blog that I started all those years ago and I kind of want to walk you through the process of what you should be doing if you're looking to start a blog in 2024, the things that you should be doing, how it has changed. It has changed so much and what I did then won't work now and the strategies that I'm using with the content that I created oh so long ago and just repurposing and all those those things I want to talk about how you can do that and get the most bang out of the content that you are creating so when I started my blog all those years ago I really had no idea what I was doing I just start talking from the top of my head and from my heart and whatever I wanted to share with no strategy and no idea what I was doing in the midst of that so I want to save you the heartache that I had to go through when I started my blog. Now, the first thing you want to do is set up your blog. That's obvious. You want to make sure that you're on a self hosted WordPress blog. This is a blog that you own, you control, and that you don't have to worry about anyone else owning the intellectual property to what you put on that blog. So you want to make sure you own that. You don't want to start it on any other platform. Okay. People ask me all the time, well, what about this or what about that? No. WordPress.org self-hosted WordPress site. This is what I recommend because you want to own your content and you want to be able to do all the things that you can do in order to monetize it and to help it to grow and everything like that. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to set up our blog. Now, the first part of setting up that blog is you want to get hosting. You want this blog to be hosted and you need to purchase hosting from a company. Now, when I started my blog, I I went with Bluehost. Bluehost was absolutely my price range. It was affordable and it was exactly what I was looking for. I wasn't looking to purchase my own server to have hosting or I wasn't looking for these huge amounts of data storage. I just needed something to get started. So you want to make sure that you're looking for hosting that fits what you need. You don't need all this huge space for now. You just want something that's going to be affordable and allows you to put your blog post up on your site and without it going down all the time. So Bluehost is who I chose. They are absolutely amazing hosts. And if you're looking for something that's easy and affordable, I would definitely say go with them. Currently I am on big scoots. That's a lot different. If you're expecting a lot of traffic to your site and you just need something that's a lot more robust and I would say dependable, something that can hold tons and tons of people coming to your website. That's who I'm using now, Big Scoots, because I get a lot more traffic and I just want to prepare for what's going to happen with my blog when I blow up and I have all these visitors to my site. So I am currently on Big Scoots and they're absolutely amazing as well. So maybe you have a blog and you know, it's growing and you have all these viewers and you want something different, Big Scoots is also an amazing um, option as well. I'll put a link down in the description with my affiliate link. If you use my link, I will get a kickback on that. You don't pay anything extra. I just get a referral fee for telling you about it. So that'll be down in the description. Now, after you set up your blog, you want to make it look good, right? We want to represent our brand in a way that is going to look professional and it's also going to be engaging for the viewer when they come to our site. And to make your blog look good, you're gonna need to use a blog template. This is just something that already has the design of the blog already created. So you don't have to know HTML or CSS or whatever it is they're using these days to build websites. You don't have to know any of that. You simply just need to buy a template that you like and looks good for you and simply 
implement that on your website and it's literally a website in a box you simply click something make a couple of little customizations to your brand colors and everything like that and your blog is ready to go it looks good it looks professional and you're really ready to receive readers at that point now after you set the template up on your site the next thing you need to consider is what is this blog going to be about? What am I going to write about? And you need to choose a niche. Now, a lot of people like to stray away from topics that are popular. I like to say that popular niches are proof of concept. It tells me that people are looking to read this type of information and they're going to be looking for it. My job then is to stand out in that popular niche and do something different. So there's two mindsets here. You can choose a popular niche that you know people are going to be looking for and you're pretty much guaranteeing that you will get some views if you just stand out a tad bit or you you can go with something that is not as saturated and you know risk the chance of not getting as much traffic because maybe the traffic pool is not large enough maybe that many people aren't looking for the topic that you're wanting to blog on but you also could dominate that niche by just catering to such a small set of people who are looking for that so two ways to look at that then you also could do like a niche combo so say for instance you're a mom you're a homemaker and you want to write about cleaning and cooking and baking and things like that you could mesh all of those topics together and try to hit on all of them so you can choose choose a overarching niche and then have multiple subjects within that niche that you talk about. So for instance, with homemaking, you may talk about cooking and cleaning, and then you may talk about home decor. Those could be three topics that you would talk about on that specific blog. And so that would give you the opportunity to reach more readers and expand the potential readers that you have for that specific blog. So choosing your niche is going to come down to that. What is it that you're interested in because you have to have an interest in what you're talking about in order to do it for the long term and to give good information with it what's popular what do people want to see right that's super important because you don't want to be writing about something that people don't even care about people need to want to read about it and then lastly is it going to be profitable? It blows my mind the number of people that just really don't think about this topic, but you gotta think about how are you gonna make money with it? How will you monetize? And that's something that I will go into at the end of the video, but that is something that you need to keep in mind as well. How are you going to monetize? Now, once you're at this point, you have everything all set up. Now it's time for you to start creating some content. This is the fun part. This is the part that gets us the viewers and all the those things so the first thing you need to think about when you start creating your content is what topics am I going to talk about on this blog right and I think that you need to clearly identify those topics before you even write a blog post so going back to the homemaker example if we're talking about recipes and cooking and we're talking about cleaning and then we're talking about home decor those would be our blog pillars now you need to make sure you get really really familiar with this term called search engine optimization and this is where you use keywords in order to rank your blog posts on Google. Basically, you want to find keywords that have a low competition, but they're highly searched. And you can use several tools to do this to figure out what those words are. I use key search because I feel like it's really easy to use. You simply type in the keyword that you're thinking of focusing on in the search bar above, and it gives you back results of what that keyword is currently doing. I love how it tells you like, okay, look, based on your website, your chances of ranking for this is not good. Or it tells you your chances for ranking for this is really good. So it's up to you to choose keywords that are going to make sense for your site size. And being that you're just starting the site, you want to make sure that you're looking for keywords that have low competition and high search volume, because this is going to give you the opportunity to rank for them because that many people are not 
creating content on it and you get the opportunity to dominate that keyword. So that's how you can use key search or any other search tool in order to do that keyword research. Now, a free way of doing this is simply by going onto Google. You literally just start typing that keyword and then it will begin to populate what people are searching for on Google as you begin to type that keyword. So for instance, you could be typing how to bake a cake. It's going to show you all of the results that people are searching when it comes to that keyword. Now, I had no idea about search engine optimization when I started. I'm like, SEO, what is that? I didn't even know it was a thing. I didn't find out until I was blogging for about a year, okay? I was blogging probably for a good year before I even found out that was a thing. But this is so, 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 so important to your blog. You have to focus on ranking your blog posts with keywords. You have to do this because no one knows who you are. No one is just going to automatically go to your blog because it's good. No, you have to give them a reason to come to it. And that reason is going to be because they found you on a Google search by searching something on the internet. So you want to make sure that you're focusing in on that search engine optimization. Don't make it any harder than that. There are so many other aspects to SEO. SEO, but this is the easiest way to get there is by simply focusing your mind on ranking for a keyword when you start taking that keyword, a long form keyword. So you want to try to focus on a long tail keyword, which is what we call it, which is a keyword that is more than two words. So instead of saying decorating ideas, you would say decorating ideas for teenagers, right? So that's a more long tail keyword because your competition is going to be lower on that because they're not going to be as many people creating content for decorating ideas for teenagers. So you want to make sure that you're using a long tail keyword when you're trying to rank those blog posts. Now, when it comes to frequency of blog posts, I think that you have to do this based on what your life looks like right now. If you know that you can't sustain three blog posts a week, I think that it's okay for you to do one blog post a week. But I think that should be the minimum one a week just to show Google, Hey, look, I am over here. I am creating content. I'd love for you to send me some traffic, right? It shows them that you're serious about your blog, that you are a trustworthy source that they can send people to your site and they are not going to be disappointed. And you're not just some fly by night site that people go to and they can't trust trust it. So once a week is that's the minimum. And then ideally, I think that two posts a week is good because when I was at my peak time of posting, I could sustain that two posts a week while still working and doing all of the other things that I was doing. Two posts a week is what was sustainable for me. But if that's not sustainable for you, one post a week will do. That's absolutely fine as well. You just want to make sure that if you're doing one post a week, that it's really, really good. You're taking your time. You're doing custom photos in there. You are researching the topics that you're talking about and you're really giving your all to those posts. Long form posts tend to do a lot better. So 2,500 words or more. I have posts that are like 5,000 words that do absolutely amazing and rank for me throughout the year. So I think it's important to have some of those like cornerstone posts on your site that are like in depth and you're going really deep into the topic to show Google that you are an authority on that topic. Once you write one of those cornerstone pieces, you can also create additional pieces to support that. So you'll create supplemental pieces that will also drive traffic to that cornerstone post to show Google that this is the post that you need to be sending people to when they're looking for things on this topic, because you're going to create supplemental posts to point to that post as well, because that's the post that you want Google to point to. So posting two times a week is ideal if you want to increase that traffic to your site, especially if you're new, you need to be like savage with your posting schedule. It's no skipping, right? If you set a schedule and you say, I'm going to post once a week, try your best to stick to that at least for a year. Yeah, at least for a year, four posts a month, 48 posts, wait, 52 weeks, 52 posts a year <laughs> and make sure that you stick to that so that Google knows she's serious and I'm going to send her traffic. So 
that's your posting schedule. So let's talk about gaining traffic to your blog. Now, in addition to Google search, you want to be doing other things to promote your blog and your blog posts because Google takes time. It takes time to rank these blog posts on Google. It typically takes about two to three months for the blog posts to gain traction on Google. But in the meantime, you want to be promoting your site as well. Now, one of the best ways to promote your blog, in my opinion, is with YouTube. I feel like blogging and YouTube are the Bonnie and Clyde of the internet. They work so well together. And this is how I actually started this YouTube channel and thus grew my blog with this YouTube channel is by simply creating supplemental content, supplementing my blog posts with YouTube videos and supplementing my YouTube videos with blog posts. They work seamlessly together. One of the biggest reasons why I like them together is that they both operate on search engines. So I simply can create content one time and people will find me for years to come based on that one piece of content because people are continually searching as long as you're creating evergreen content that will make sense for them in a year the same as it does today it will work for you. So you got to keep evergreen content in mind if you want to use this strategy. YouTube also has so many benefits by itself, even outside of a blog, but pairing it together with a blog, it's that much better. You can be monetized on YouTube and make money from your content that you're creating. You meet so many people on YouTube that will then find out about your blog and go over to visit your site. There are just so many benefits to having a YouTube channel alongside your blog. Now, in addition to that YouTube channel, Pinterest is another amazing way to promote your blog post as well. Pinterest is the only platform on the internet that people go to specifically to go to blogs, right? It's the only site where you're like, let me go over here to Pinterest and see what I can find because I want to go to a blog and I want to see what ideas they have about this topic. So Pinterest is a must have as well. When you're first starting your blog though, if you had to pick one, I would definitely say for the first six months to lock in and focus on Pinterest because again, this is the site that everyone goes to specifically specifically to go to blogs and it's evergreen as well. It's a search engine as well. And people go there to search. And if you're putting out your pins with your blog post, then essentially that traffic that you're getting in the beginning will start to happen much faster prior to your blog posts actually getting picked up by the search engines because Pinterest, it'll happen a bit faster because people are searching on Pinterest to specifically go over to your site. Now, after the first six months is when I think that it's good to start a YouTube channel. Six months into your blog, you can go ahead and start a YouTube channel and recreate some of that content that you made on the blog within the first six months because that video is going to help supplement that blog post, thus helping it do better in the search engine. So when it comes to getting traffic to your blog, I think that YouTube and Pinterest are your best bets and your best idea. I do not think that you should even attempt social media prior to the one year mark on starting your blog because your attention will be split and it's very hard to do multiple things at one time. You know that saying where they say, if you try to catch two rabbits, you'll end up catching neither of them because you just can't focus on the two things at one time. That's how I feel like it is with blogging. You got to let the main thing remain the main thing for a while, at least for the first year, right? Until you get a hang of your posting schedule and how to rank your stuff and how to promote your things. Let Google search Pinterest and YouTube do that for you. And after the first year, if you want to move on to a social media platform like TikTok, that could be great because people love TikTok. And if you can grow on there and gain some traction on there, it is great to send people back over to your site because I've actually been searching on Google, seeing TikTok videos come up in the search. So I think that's a thing now. So TikTok would probably be the first social media platform that I would consider after that first year if you're just starting with this. Now, if you have a team of people helping you, maybe you have someone that's gonna be doing your Pinterest pins for you or that's gonna be writing for you or uploading your content, then fine, and it's freeing up your time. You can absolutely go ahead and start your TikTok whenever you like. I'm just saying if you're brand new at this and you're just trying to get your feet wet in the blogging game, I do not think it's a good idea to try to start your social 
media right away. I would definitely give it a year to focus in on creating those blog posts, getting them ranked on Google, getting those YouTube videos up to supplement, get those pins to supplement, and then in year two, social media can be on the radar at that time. And now for the fun part, how you're gonna make money with your blog. Now, this is something that I wasn't even thinking about when I first started my blog. This just wasn't even a thought. It wasn't a thought at all. So I wanna save you the headache of doing the same thing that I did. Now, I have two recommendations for great ways to make money in the beginning of your blog. The first one is going to be with affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is simply you receiving a commission back for telling people about products and services that you know, like, and love. It's real, real simple. Here's a shirt. I bought it from a specific store. I absolutely love it. It's cute. It's comfy. It feels good. Do you like it, girl? If so, check out my link and purchase it. That is what it is. Simple. And we all have services and companies and clothing items and productivity items and every type of thing that we love and that we don't mind sharing with people. And so that's simply what you're going to do. Bake it into your content strategy in your blog post to where you're going to be referring people to services and products that you use and love. You can do particular blog posts around recommendations. So like Mother's Day gift ideas, birthday gift ideas, productivity hacks, and things that will cause people to want to purchase. Do blog posts that people are searching because they want to buy something. So maybe they're searching up the best barbecue grill. Do a blog post about barbecue grills if you have one or your favorite barbecue grill because people are looking. If you're searching for something like that, that means that you're looking to purchase. So that's what you want to think about when you're doing your affiliate marketing posts. What are people looking to buy? What do I want to recommend? What do I have an expertise with that I could tell people about or show them this product because they're interested in buying? So affiliate marketing is going to be the first way. One of the most popular affiliate marketing platforms there are is Amazon. A lot of people use Amazon. People shop on there every single day. And the opportunity is just great to make money with Amazon. They have the Amazon Associates program where you can sign up and immediately start referring products and services. With that, you do have to hit a minimum. I want to say it's $100 within your first 90 days of being in the program that you have to refer. And then they have a program called the Amazon Amazon influencer program where you get to set up your own online storefront and recommend products and services from there. I actually like this part because I can recommend multiple things at one time on my storefront. I can link people over to certain shopping lists so I could create a whole shopping list around my favorite office products and then they can go in there just choose the options on their own and they actually have an on-site commission program that is absolutely amazing that you can get paid for simply reviewing products on Amazon. So I think that affiliate marketing is great if you're just starting out and it's easy. You can get your feet wet with sales and start making those initial coins to really motivate you to want to do the next thing, which is digital products. I like digital products is because you can simply take the knowledge that you have on anything and create a digital product with it. My personal favorite is eBooks because I can literally just take my knowledge and put it on a piece of paper and share it with you for $10, $15, $20, whatever you want it to be. Digital products are great because you can create them in a weekend, literally, especially eBooks, because all you have to do is write out whatever it is that you know about that topic, package it together inside of Canva to make it look good, set it up on Shopify to send out to your customers and boom, you now have a product to sell. So I absolutely love digital products because you also can create blog posts around them. So say for instance, you create a e-guide on 30 slow cooker recipes for uh, large families, right? And you got the pictures of your slow cooker meals in there and you, you're telling them about how to make them and the things that you use to cook these products. This can be a double whammy. So inside the book, you can be sharing your favorite cooking products, like your favorite slow cooker and the favorite spoons and the aprons and all those things and the things to buy to put in certain recipes. But you're also going to be selling that ebook too, because 
because that's going to also help them to make those easy fast meals in their slow cooker you're going to put all of those recipes together in an ebook and you can simply sell it to them for however much you want to sell it to them for that then becomes passive income where you can be making money while you're sleeping so that's the benefit of affiliate marketing and digital products because once you set this stuff up it's like you're a farmer you're simply planting seeds <laughs> along the way and over time they begin to grow and that harvest begins to grow and you begin to see yourself you know making more and more and more money the more seeds that you plant so this is why these are the two monetization methods that I absolutely love for beginners because they're easy to start and then they're easy to grow and scale over time now while in 2024 blogging has changed dramatically it totally has not died it's still a thing and I definitely think it's still beneficial for every creator to have a blog I like to tell people it's important for you to have a corporate headquarters people need to know where to go to pay you okay yes I can go to your Instagram yes I can go to your YouTube but sometimes that's a little hard to reach and you don't own those platforms you need to have a platform that you own that's yours that has your name on it so I always recommend every creator to have a blog now things have changed for blogging I don't think that you have to do it as often your frequency doesn't have to be as much as it was before because this is simply going to be your primary piece of content each week. This will be your primary piece of content and then you have social media and other things that will help you to drive traffic back to your platform and your primary piece of content. So it's changed a lot in that respect because blogs used to be the primary platform people really weren't using social media like that and growing how they are now and socializing and doing brand deals and all the things like they are now because the blog was the primary platform and that's where people were making all their money and getting all their brand deals but now you have your headquarters this is the main thing and you use social media to drive traffic back to that blog but you got to be particular on which platforms you're using to do that because other platforms you're going to use those for discovery opportunities for people simply to find out about you and your blog and what you do so the way we use our blog in 2024 is a lot different but it's absolutely still essential in the content pyramid you absolutely still need it and i still think it should be at the very top of everything that you're doing online